Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're going to look at how to create a virtual switch on VMware 6.5 or 6.7. Very easy, let's look at how to do that right now. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and today we're going to look at how to create a virtual switch. So you've already got, we're assuming you've already got a ESXi or a vCenter instance already created. You're logged into that instance via vSphere. So we're connected into the vSphere web client right here. We're logged in, we can see our host, we can see some VMs, we can see our storage. And then we've got a networking tab right here. Within the networking tab currently, you'll see that I've got two different port groups, VM network and management network. Uh, and then you've got a few other tabs on the top around virtual switches, physical NICs, VM kernel NICs, TCP IP stacks, and firewall rules. We're not going to cover exactly what each of those are, but essentially, in a nutshell, a VM port group needs to be allocated to a particular virtual switch. So you see that both of these port groups are both members of vSwitch 0. So if you want to create additional port groups, you can create them on the existing vSwitch 0 or you can create a new virtual switch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new virtual switch. So if you select the virtual switches tab, you see that here is virtual switch zero. And as you saw in the previous port groups tab, we've got two port groups assigned to it. This has currently one uplink. So depending on your physical hardware, the physical server that you've got ESXi running, uh, you may have one or more network points. If you've got one network point, then you can only have one uplink, right? There's only one network point available, so you can't really have uh, redundancy. You can't have multiple links going in or, or going out. Uh, if you have a server that has multiple points, you've got a bit more flexibility around how you configure your network and your virtual switches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say add standard virtual switch. In here, I've got a few different options. I've got my vSwitch name. So let's just call it, because I've got the other one called vSwitch 0. We're going to call this vSwitch 1. And now it's going to ask me for the uplink, the connection. If I do a drop down, you'll see that I've got seven virtual NICs that are currently on my server, physically available on my server, but they're all currently down, which means that there's no physical cable plugged into it or that port hasn't been enabled if it's connected into a switch, for example. But I do know that they exist, all right? You'll notice that my existing uplink, all right? So the existing one that is up is not available. That will be called VM NIC zero. It's not available because it's assigned to vSwitch zero. So if you do have one physical uplink, you can only really assign it to one physical, or one virtual uh, switch. So just keep that in mind. So we're going under the assumption that you've got additional ports here, or you're creating a port from scratch, uh, a, a, a virtual switch from scratch, excuse me. Um, otherwise, we can go ahead here and we can select a VM NIC. So for example, it may be down because it's not configured, it's not ready to go, but we know it will be. So we're gonna select, uh, we're gonna use VM NIC 5 because VM NIC 5, we know that's gonna be connected to a particular port on a switch that has the relevant network that I need to connect to. MTU, you leave that as a default. Link discovery, you can leave that generally as, as default. The protocol is quite cool. There's this feature called CDP, which is Cisco Discovery Protocol, which will only really be usable if your, if your host is plugged into a uh, Cisco switch. So you can actually get Cisco port information, the, the switch information, um, what port it's plugged into, those sort of things, all right? And the security, you can add a few different uh, modes here if you want to accept or reject particular security measures, but we're not going to cover those today, but we'll leave those as default. And we're going to say add. So that has now created a new virtual switch called vSwitch1 and an uplink of one, which we currently now know is physically disconnected. I can now click on the physical Nix tab. And you'll see right here, here are my eight virtual Nix. Zero, which is assigned to vSwitch0, right? And you'll see here that the speed is a gigabit, so it's 100, 1,000 megabit per second, so it's a gigabit port. And then we've also got vSwitch1, which we assigned vNIC5, all right? And the link is currently down. So as soon as we do plug in a cable or enable that port, that should come up and it will display the speed 
of that necessary uh, port or the switch that it's configured into. All right. So that's really it on how to configure and create a virtual switch. Now, that really doesn't mean anything because there's no port groups assigned to it yet. So the next step is to create a port group. So I can select that virtual switch. You'll see some information about this particular virtual switch. See how many ports are available, right? So, you know, very much like a physical switch that has a number of ports, perhaps 24 or 48, this has up to 5,632 ports, which is quite cool. You'll see a whole bunch of other information, no port groups, and this is the virtual port VMNIC 5, which is on the physical adapter. So the other thing that is giving me a note here is that the virtual switch has no up, uplink redundancy. So what this means is that uh, for if this particular physical connector, this physical port went down, then everything that's connected to this virtual switch, every VM would go down with it. So it's always good practice to have a second um, physical NIC attached to it. So we'll just go back to networking and now we can go into port groups and I'm now going to say add port group. Let's let's say this is for example your um, development network. This is where all your development servers are going to sit. You can create a VLAN for this particular port. All right? Only create a VLAN if you need the servers or the equipment that is running on that um, in this particular port to be on a particular VLAN, then you configure it appropriately. And then you select what virtual switch you want it to be part of. So we've created a new virtual switch one. And I can say add. That is now created development network. Again, there's no active ports because we haven't plugged it in and that's connected to virtual switch one. So if I go back into virtual switch one, you see that now a port group has been allocated to virtual switch one. Really the next step from here is to go and create a VM and then assign that VM to that particular port group, to that particular port, which is part of the development network, and then ensure that the ports are actually active on your network. So that is the steps on how to create a virtual switch in VMware ESXi. Hope you found it helpful. Comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts and we will talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.